Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. I'm your host, VGM Corn, and in the last one, we got the Fuchsia City Gym Badge from the quote-unquote Poison Gym, which had, you know, like, three Poison Pokemon in total inside of it. In this one, we're going to the worst place in the world, the Safari Zone. And we're also taking the longest possible route to get there through the city because this city is terrible. This is the Safari Zone, so you can talk to this guy. Hi, is it your first time here at the Safari? Okay, yeah. The Safari Zone actually has four zones in it. Each zone has different kinds of Pokemon, even some rare ones. Use the supplied far Safari Balls to catch them. You can also throw bait or rocks beside the Safari Balls. If you can throw bait, the Pokemon becomes less likely to flee, but harder to catch. If you throw rocks, the Pokemon becomes more likely to flee, but easier to catch. When you run out of time or balls, it's game over for you. Alright, so what that actually transfer um, means is you can pay $500 and then you get Safari Balls, which you can, you know, we'll call you on the PA when you run out of time or Safari Balls. Well, I wish you the best of luck. You have 500 steps from starting your starting location. And that means we only have 500 steps. So, oh, I already went the wrong way and screwed everything up. But this shows exactly what I want to show. This is the Safari Zone battle, where you, the trainer, stand at, you know, against Rhyhorns and then throw balls at them. Well, as you can kind of see, um, this would not be a great idea, because you're throwing rocks and balls at wild Pokemon and you have no... You have nothing to protect yourself with. Who thought this was a good idea? It's a terrible idea. Now, there are houses around here, but I'm not actually going to go through them. Now, you might be wondering, well, why aren't you doing that? Well, because there's something here we have to get. Actually, there are two somethings here we have to get in order to be able to get through the story. And to do that, we have to go to the deepest part of the Safari Zone, which I have no idea where it is. I have completely forgotten the layout of the Safari Zone. So this is likely to end in tears for everyone. It's going to be great. Anyway, we found a Max Potion, so that totally makes this worth it. Um, if you press start, you can see how many steps you have left. Oh, it's 600 steps. They changed it from 500. Well, that is nice. We're going to get this ball. It's a full restore. Full restore um, cures all stats effects and heals all HP. It's kind of it's kind of an I win button. That's a Kangaskhan. We're going to throw some balls at it. In my experience with the Safari Zone, throwing rocks just doesn't work well, but we're going to go ahead and, you know, try it, see if it works. I actually don't have a whole lot of experience with the Safari Zone in this version. So as you can see, we smacked that Kangaskhan in the face. It's angry. Uh-oh. We accidentally threw a, ro a rock at it. It's angry. Now we throw balls at it. And... Um... Well, no. No, it doesn't get caught at all. So as you can see, rocks are useless. But because you only have 30 balls, you know... It's a... It's... Oh god, it's an execute. Ah... Uh, well, I guess I'll catch it. I'm... Okay, I'm gonna throw balls. Okay, you know what? No, no, you're a stupid bunch of eggs, and I'm not. I'm not trying to catch you. Goodbye forever. I believe that I'm going the right way. Um, maybe. Win a free HM for finding the secret house. Yeah, that's that's a great prize. Is some move that my Pokemon will never be able to forget and probably will be useless. Thanks. You actually have to find two items, though, and the game is not very clear about this because, well, the game hates you. It hates you and it wants you to get stuck and run around the Safari Zone for the next eternity. But we won't be doing that. We will be picking up this ball. Oh, Steel Wing. Steel Wing is an attack that is Steel-type, and it also can raise your Pokémon's defense. It's a pretty good attack, actually. It's usually usually only available to the Skarmory, um... I guess I can't say Skarmory Lime because Skarmory is just one Pokemon. Protein raises your Pokemon's basic attack stat, or base attack stat, and it's very useful. Now we're actually almost to the secret zone, I think, maybe, um, oh yeah, Lost Gold Teeth, they're around here somewhere, oh wait, I should probably read that. Reward offered, contract the Warden. And here's the Gold Teeth, we actually need this to progress through the game as well. It's kind of, you know, 
Annoying. And our team, this time double team. And we can go into this house. And talk to this guy. Ah, finally! You're the first person to reach the secret house. Although I made a campaign for our grand opening, I was getting worried that no one would win our campaign prize. Congratulations, you have won. You get HM3! HM3 is Surf. Pokemon will be able to ferry you across water using it. And this HM isn't disposable, so you can use it over and over. You're super lucky for winning this fabulous prize. I hate you and everything about you. Now, while Surf actually is the only good HM, because it actually does an extreme amount of damage, we're just gonna go look at it. It has 95 power, 15 uses, and Fatty Fatty can Surf? Huh. We won't do that, but we'll teach it to Flopflum, but as you can tell, it's actually a good move. We'll be replacing Water Pulse with it to get a much more powerful technique. Flopflum forgets Water Pulse and learns Surf. Surf is always the most used HM in any Pokemon game, so yeah. The fact that this is hidden in the Safari Zone is one of the things, one of the many things that makes Pokemon Fire Red annoying. Anyways, we're gonna go into this rest house and talk to these people that are resting. Tossing rocks at Pokemon might make them run, but I'll be able to hear the burp. Using bait will make Pokemon more likely to stick around if they get busy eating. And you? I hiked a lot, but I didn't see any Pokemon I wanted. Sounds like my life. All right, we are actually going to go and I guess I'll just run around the rest of the Safari Zone now that we have everything we came here for. And yeah, that's the only- that's it. That is all you get to know about the Safari Zone. Or, I mean, what I mean to say is that's what's in the Safari Zone, is uh, two key items that you have to get and you have limited steps to find each time. Now, as a kid, I played this game over and over again, so I obviously knew where the stuff was. Oh god, I didn't- I didn't mean to throw a ball. No! I don't want it! No, stop! Well, we caught an Interan mail. Alright. It has large ears or something. And, and, uh, we are naming this Nidoran... Stupid... Face. Stupid face. That's our name for him. Uh, wait, it's that E. There it is. All right. Stupid faces sent to Bill's PC. <sighs> I didn't want that. All right. Is there anything over here aside from this item? It's a max revive. It revives you maxily. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going with. Anyways, as you can see, there are plenty of items in the Safari Zone, so aside from catching Pokémon, you can spend a lot of time looking around for hidden items. It's actually kind of fun. Now for... Oh. Okay, I didn't know that was there. Apparently there's a Leaf Stone right next to that nugget, and we found it. So, hooray, I guess. It's kind of weird. Anyway, we'll spend the rest of the time, um, which is... An additional 63 steps running through this tall grass and trying to find something useful. That doesn't count. Let's throw a ball at it anyway, though. It's a Venonat. It evolves into a Venomoth, which is a Poison Bug-type Pokemon, and who I could have sworn Koga actually had, but apparently not. Its eyes act as a radar, enabling it to be active in darkness. The eyes can also shoot powerful beams. So... That's kind of amazing. I mean, it has both night vision and laser eyesight. I mean, who's going to mess with that? Oh, wait, he's terrible. That is a Nidorina. It is the female Nidoran. And we're going to catch it, maybe. We're going to just throw a bunch of balls at Balls, 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 balls. Okay, this isn't working. We're going to throw a rock at it. Rocks, rocks. Oh. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> didn't work at all. And another Naran male, we're running away from that. I actually wanted a Rhyhorn or a Scyther or something cool to put in my team to make me feel good about myself, but I guess, I guess that's not happening. I guess instead everything's gonna be bad. Because, come on. Okay, actually, I do want to show off one more trick here in the Safari Zone. If you just want to stay here indefinitely and fight things, you can very lightly tap the directional keys, and 
it will change your facing, and when you change your facing, you actually can run into wild Pokemon, as you just saw. However, this, as you can see, we have four steps, four steps. This doesn't take up your steps. It is a very, very cheap boss, boss, boss. It's a very cheap way. So, now that we have one step left, we are going to find one more Pokemon, and if it's terrible, we're leaving. One more Pokemon, and then if it's terrible, we're leaving. I really want... I want to replace Doug Trio out of my team with a Rhyhorn, but we're not going to spend hours trying to catch one. So, ding dong, time's up. Your Safari game is over. And that's Safari Zone. We kind of hate it. Or at least I kind of hate it. Anyways, now that you have Surf and the gold teeth for the Warden, let's go give the Warden his gold teeth. Because that's something that we should probably do. Because, well, the game's kind of telling us that. We should probably do that. Um, which house is his? It's this one. Alright, Warden. Corrin gave the gold teeth to the Warden. Hooray! The Warden popped in his teeth. Thanks, son! You're a real lifesaver! No one could understand a word that I said! Not a one! I was too ashamed to show my face out around the office, even. Let me give you something for your trouble! And you get HM4! That's right, you get two HMs from this place. Inside HM4, you'll find strength. It lets Pokemon move boulders when you're outside of battle. Oh yes, did you find the secret house in the Safari Zone? Which is trying to tell you if you only found the gold teeth that you're still screwed and you still need to find more. Now, strength is a normal type move, and we could teach it to Fatty Fatty, but Fatty Fatty's too awesome. Kicktron, however, is not awesome, and thus, Kicktron will learn strength. I'm sorry, Kicktron. You don't get to keep three different fighting moves. We're gonna get rid of Mo Rolling Kick because Rolling Kick is actually kind of terrible. Alright, so now we have Machine Set Strength. Alright, so Kicktron can now kick boulders out of the way. That's what we're going with. And we can do things like, well, it's a big boulder. Would you like to use Strength? And then your Hitmonlee comes up, and then you can push a boulder! and you get a rare candy. And after vandalizing his house, you can leave him. And after that, you can leave Fuchsia City forever. And ever. You never have to come back. It's a glorious day, because you never, ever have to come back. So let's just hop along and hope, oh, trainers. I have to exercise and warm up before going out for a swim. Now, swimmers are the most, why is it sandy? Well, swimmer, swimmers are the most worthless of any particular, um, group or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, because they give you no money for winning. Watch, we're going to uh, take this guy out, and we're going to take out his shelter, and we're going to take out his shelter, and we're going to take out his shelter. Okay, and Rodney's will go to level 35, and... Uh, you get to defeat him. And he's like, oh, warmed up. And you get 120 for winning. 120. Anyway, since this is a water type area, it's Frodo's time to shine. Hooray. Wait, slow down. You'll have a heart, at a heart attack. Why will I have a heart attack? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to poison powder. We're going to poison powder you. And because... Because Fro Frodo's um, battle style is very slow, we will be we will be going through it as fast as we possibly can. Unfortunately, this does mean that Frodo will not be able to stay in the lead because, well, he doesn't have the technique for it. And as you can see, that Staryu actually has recover, and Poison isn't doing enough damage. So there we go. Now, actually, I do want to do something, and now that I think about it, because Frodo is our poisoner, well, we should do something. We should do something about that to make him more useful and less having one attack that only works five times. So we will find TM6 Toxic, and we will teach it to Frodo. Now, pretty much every Pokémon can learn Toxic, and Toxic is an amazing move, and you should probably have one on your team. But at least in this game, because you only get one use per TM, it can be very dangerous to just randomly give it out to Pokemon. But that is okay because, well, um, 
I don't know. Can anyone learn Psychic? Probably not. Can anyone learn... These are a bunch of great abilities. Okay, we're leaving. We're moving on. This is the surfing area of the game. I hate this area. I look out the sea and forget all the bad things that happened. Um, that's great, I guess. Anyways, let's show off Toxic. Toxic is a very powerful move. Horsey is badly poisoned. Horsey is hurt by his poison. You might be thinking, that wasn't very much damage. But just give it a couple of turns. Give it a couple of turns. And now it's taking out over half his life in a single hit. So that is how Frodo will be battling, likely. At least in part, from now on. Which means that the skip button will be... The oh my god, stop miss... Wow! You missed four Toxics in a row. I, I, I don't know what to say to you. I'm just going to switch you out for someone who doesn't suck. And... I guess I can show off Strength. Yep, that's Strength. It's strong. Anyways, it's actually not. Now... Oh yeah, there's actually something else I meant to do while I'm at it. Because, well, we should. Oh, traumatic! As you might have noticed, when you're on the water, I'm not looking at the sea to forget the bad thing that happened. Well, it can be very hard to get back to a, a Pokemon Center without, you know, dying a horrible, horrible death. And so for that reason, we are going to use a third HM in this game. Or episode. It is Fly. Fly is the only non-essential HM, but it essentially is essential. Do you likewise did there? Fly is a fairly weak attack, at least in this game. It only has 70 power, but it's better than wing attack, and that's the only other thing Charizard learns for flying. So, Bahamut learned Fly, and now we can fly back to cities directly from our Pokémon in case we ever run out. I tried diving for Pokémon, but it was a no-go. This is actually, well... Later, in, a, in later games, you can actually dive, or at least in one later game. One. So, yeah. Anyways, as you can see, Frodo's Giga Drain does just destroy Water-type Pokémon, but the fact that it has only a few uses makes it, oh god, makes it pretty hard to use. Aurora Beam is an Ice-type move, which means that it is actually super effective against Grass. And, oh god, stop hurting me. No, stop! I can't take the damage. But, there we go. <laughs> Alright, Seeking is the evolution of Goldeen, despite the fact that it now is a male, apparently. And is going to be Frodo's last Pokémon that he fights for the next while, because he's now out of Giga Drains. Because he sucks. Help! I will not. I will not help you. I guess you have to fish for sea Pokémon. Or, you know, run into them while you're surfing, which is going to be a thing that starts happening very regularly here in a couple of seconds. I'm pretty sure, at least. Now, I'm not going to go out of my way to challenge all of these surfers, mostly because they just, they are, they're low level and they don't give a lot of money, and I hate surfing. Surfing is terrible, and you run into level 10 tentacles. That's, that's what surfing consists of, is getting no money, and then running into level 10 tentacles, and then finding your way to a cave. Let's talk to this guy. Strong trainers and water Pokemon are common sights in these parts. They say that Misty of the Cerulean Gym trains here. That's great, I guess. These are the Seafoam Islands! And what are you doing over there? You know what? I don't care. We're gonna go into the Seafoam Islands. Wow, we're actually getting a far way. And the Seafone Islands, as you might have guessed from the color palette, is a nice dungeon. And it's also a dungeon in the middle of the water. And it's also a dungeon with bloody Zubats that are faster than Fatty Fatty and Fatty Fatty can't get away. Oh god, this is going to suck. Alright, so here we find an ice heel and we'll be looking around because, well, it seems like the thing to do. Psyduck, no one cares. No one cares. I don't care. You don't care. Now, what you might notice is that there are boulders, and there are holes, and, oh god, Fatty Fatty is very slow, so getting away from battles with him is actually difficult. In that case, we will put Doug Drio, or, I mean, Rodneys in front. Rodneys are very fast and make getting away a cinch. What you want to do here is use strength, and yes, you have to use strength to continue the game, and... Put these boulders... Oh my god. I don't... 
I don't care. I don't care, Psyduck. Go away. I hate you. And push them into the holes. That is the thing you have to do. Oh, yes, and the encounter rate here, like most caves, is obscenely high. Be prepared for me skipping a lot of battles. Now, this is this area of the Seafoam Islands that... It's just a big dungeon. I, I don't know what to say about it, really, aside from the fact that it's a really big dungeon. And it, unfortunately, there is something here that we do not want to miss. Golbat is the evolution of Zubat. I think I've already said that multiple times. Anyways, we'll come down here. Actually, we won't. We'll keep looking around. Who am I kidding? Oh, and you can fall in holes. Just so you know. So, yeah. Oh, it's a seal. A seal is a ice water Pokemon. That's terrible. So we're running away. Goodbye, seal. Goodbye forever. I will not miss you. I have missed many Pokemon, but not you. Golduck is the evolution of Psyduck, and manages to look really cool instead of really stupid. It's also a pretty useful Pokemon. Now, you might ask yourself, am I going to be skipping constantly? Yes. The answer to that is yes. I will be. Now, it, since you can fall down holes, you might think to yourself, well, should I follow boulders down? You, sir, are a genius for thinking that. And then you come down here, and it's too big for your Pokemon, so something, something, push the boulder around. And there we go. Boulder's in the hole. Let's go down the hole after the boulder. Hole found. Now, you might be wondering, are you just going to chase this boulder around? Yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's my plan right now. Whee! <laughs> and, as you might notice, that sends you over here because we have not cut off the current yet. So, yeah, that's what we have to get these boulders down to do. Uh, it's kind of a bizarre thing. It's danger, fast current. It's kind of an interesting thing, actually. And you might see there's something over there. Curious, isn't it? What could it be? Well, if you want to find out what it is, then you're going to have to join me in the next one when I pick up from this exact spot. I hope to see you then where we discover the secret of... What's this place called again? Seafoam Islands. Seafoam Islands. Yeah! I hope to see you in the next one.